So normality actually refer to distribution of uh, data points. So if uh, data point distribution of data points is frequency and this is uh, data point. If distribution of data, data point is something similar to this bell curve or close to this bell curve, so it's normal. But it's uh, skewed to right or left or uh, sharper or uh, uh, actually uh, flatter here. Uh, so we have uh, a cortices or we have skewness, high cortices or high skewness. So our data is not normal. When, why we need to check normality? Because actually the most of analysis technique that uh, we will go through need normality requirement. So without normality, without normal distribution, most of these analysis technique is not possible to perform. So if you want to uh, apply, if you want to do some analysis technique for your work, for your thesis and for your research, you have to check and pass the requirement for this analysis technique, for application of this analysis technique. And normality is one of the main requirements for most of analysis technique. Because most of analysis technique fall under parametric analysis technique. And for parametric analysis technique, we need normality. Okay, so we need to check normality. Uh, uh, skewness and cortices is two main, uh, actually, criteria to assess uh, normality. Also, we can calculate, uh, we can uh, check this uh, shapiro wheel test using this shapiro wheel test for small sample and the Kolmogorov uh, Smirnov test for uh, large sample. So I will show you how we can uh, check uh, skewness and cortices, and also these two tests to check normality and to report normality. Okay. For example, for these two variables that we compute, right? Okay, for uh, cortices and the skewness, we can go for uh, different paths, right? One of the uh, very common path is uh, for descriptive analysis. When we go to analyze descriptive statistic and descriptive, click on descriptive, okay? We have two variables, right? We created these two variables. So we transfer these two variables to this box. Box in the right side, okay? Here we have something uh, to actually the for setting, if you click on option, there are something default here. You can get mean value, you can get standard deviation, you can get minimum, maximum, you can get variance, and also you can get cortices and skewness. If you click on cortices and skewness and continue, okay and click on OK. Here you can get the value of uh, skewness and cortices for, the, for these two variables. Okay, this is the value of the skewness for community attachment is minus 1.06. And the value of the uh, cortices for this uh, variable is 3.06. Uh, 0.48 and EA environmental attitude is minus 1.650 and the cortices is 5.182 okay cortices higher than point higher than 2 skewness and cortices higher than 2 or lower than minus two, higher than two, or lower than minus two, consider non-normal data. 
So if the value of skewness, either skewness or cortices is higher than two or lower than minus two means all data is not normal distributed. So we cannot meet normality requirement. So here, it means community attachment and environmental attitude are not normal data, not normal distributed. Because the value of, the value of skewness is fine, but the value of cortices is high, higher than two. Two and minus two is a very common uh, threshold. But actually, we, in the literature, we have different thresholds. Some literature uh, said one and minus one. Especially for cortices, some literature say minus seven and seven, right? But two and minus two is a common uh, recommendation. So you can follow these uh, threshold. So this is first test for normality, right? First, the uh, uh, criteria to check normality of all variables. You have to report skewness and cortices and also uh, Shapiro will test. Okay, so this is first one. Okay, this is for skewness and cortices. But if you want to use other uh, actual criteria or other methods to calculate the normality, okay. again, go to analyze. Again, descriptive. But this time, go to explore. Go to explore. So when you click on explore, okay. You need to transfer this to, to this dependent list. Okay. And you can do some setting here. Later for out layer, we need to click out layer here, but now we don't need. In plots, okay, untick this one. And normality plot with test. Normal, normality plots with test. So click on this one. Continue. And uh, okay. Click on option. You don't need to change because you already did the missing value. And click on okay. Okay. So Again, here you can see skewness and cortices. So if you didn't calculate before, you can get skewness and cortices from here. And here you can see the result of normality test using Shapiro will test or for a large sample, this uh, Kolmogorov, Kolmogorov uh, Sminrov uh, uh, test, right? Okay, for these two variables. But how we uh, actually, uh, how can we interpret these values? To interpret and to check the normality using these two tests, we have to check this p-value. Okay, this is p-value. Okay, this p-value is for testing null hypothesis. What's null hypothesis? Null hypothesis is our data is normal distributed. So this is our hypothesis, null hypothesis. Our, da our data is normal distributed, right? So, uh, or uh, data distribution is close to normal distribution, normal curve. But this is the p-value of this hypothesis. 
Okay. If this p value is lower than 0 0.05, if it's lower than 0 0.05, means null hypothesis should be rejected. What was null hypothesis? Our data is normal distributed. So when we reject this hypothesis, means our data is not normal. So to get and to confirm normality of data, this p-value should be higher than 0 0.05. So this data should be higher than 0 0.05, right? So using this uh, shapiro wilk test or this uh, Kolmogorov-Smirnov uh, test, this p-value for each variable should be higher than 0 0.05 to conclude that our data is normal distributed. So for these two, community attachment and environmental attitude, our data is not normal. Also, we got same result from cortices and skewness. Based on cortices and skewness, also these data, these two variables are not normal distributed. Right? So this is another test to check normality. Okay? So this uh, QQ plot also is another uh, way of checking normality. If our data set is all data set are very close to this line. It means our data is normal distributed, is normal. But if we have some cases with the large distance from this line, for example, here we have these two, it means data is not normal distributed. So also this one QQ plot confirm result of Skewness and cortices, and this uh, Shapiro index. If we look at the uh, normality plot, here we don't have, but uh, histogram if we check if we, the tick histogram here in this plot option right and uh, run again the analysis also you can get uh, plot histogram click okay you can get this histogram for each variable. This is for community attachment. You can see the curve for this, commu this community attachment. So you can see the curve is something like this. So also based on histogram, you can see data is not normal distributed, right? So you can see the curve. Yeah, this is another way. But uh, for your assignment, reporting cortices and skewness, and uh, this uh, Shapiro will test, uh, test is enough. Okay, no need to report histogram or this QQ plot. Okay, so this is different ways to check normality of our data. Okay, any question? Prof, can I ask a question? Yes. And um, so when we report our result, we just have to say like p-value is 
uh, lower than 0, 0, uh, 0 0.05, so it's not normal. That's enough, right? Yes. Do we have yes. to put the theory why it is No, no, uh, no need to, no need to explain zero. why. Oh, okay, no, okay. No need All to right. explain why. But the, just okay. copy just copy and paste this uh, table to your report. Oh, okay, so copy the whole the whole thing and paste not it. Not whole thing, not whole the, thing. For this example, part, this one. Normality part. Oh, if, okay. if you right, if you right click on this one, you can uh, copy and uh, paste at the word document. Yeah. Yeah. All right. New, for example, here is your document. You can paste here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. All outcome result you can copy and paste to your Word file. Last semester, uh, I had a bad experience with some student that uh, they didn't use this one and uh, take uh, actually the uh, screenshot and uh, create image and transfer image to Word file. So their Word file was very huge. So don't don't need to do this one. Mm. Just just if you click on any result that you want, for example, this one you want to transfer this table, right? Just right click, copy, and uh, paste. Okay, so you can get the result from output of SPSS for your reporting. Mm. Okay. Got it. I have a question. Okay. Yes. Oh, I have a question. Yes. Mr. Yes. In order to test for the normality, we can conduct four types of tests. But what if uh, two tests supporting, I mean, two tests showing that normal, the other two tests showing not non normal? Hmm. So, how to interpret this of results? Do we need to uh, further with our histogram? Or first, you don't, need, you don't need to report all these tests. Okay. Uh, my suggestion is always go first with the uh, skewness and courtesies. Skewness and courtesies most of the time is enough. Right? But if you want to add one more test, just report Shapiro with test. So don't need to put QQ plot and histogram and because actually QQ plot and histogram just uh, uh, for these two there is no threshold or there is no test. This is some sort of visualization. Based on. But the, there is no uh, specific value or test that you can say exactly this data is normal or is not. But for Shapiro with test, you have a test. So based on the value, the p-value, you can interpret your data is normal or not. And for uh, skewness and courtesies, you have threshold. But if you have contradictory results for skewness and courses and Shapiro will test, right? So uh, Shapiro will test is preferred. Shapiro is preferred. Yes, because because Shapiro will test we, uh, test, we have a test to mm. check hypothesis. Mm. Hypothesis is normality of our data. But even for courtesies and skewness, there are different uh, recommendations in the literature for threshold of uh, skewness and courtesies. So if you have contradictory result for, from these two tests, these two methods, okay, uh, Shapiro will uh, is the preferred method. Thanks, Prof. Okay. Um, professor, uh, I have one question. Um, yes. If the check of the normality is non normal, and then is it necessary for us to continue the rest of the analysis? Yes, yes, you have to. But I will show you how you can do it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Because uh, when you don't have normality for your data, it doesn't mean that uh, you have to stop your analysis because you want to analyze your data. But uh, if you don't have uh, normal data and your, uh, for your data actually the don't follow normality requirement, you have to use non-parametric test. Mm -hmm. Okay, later, later yeah, I will show you. Thank you. Okay.
So uh, this is for normality and uh, okay. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah. All good. Okay. Uh, another thing, missing value, normality, and this outlier, actually, this is some part of cleaning and preparation of your data for analysis. So before starting your main analysis, you have to do these steps. Actually, you need to clean, you need to uh, prepare your data for analysis and to identify what type of analysis you have to apply. For example, if uh, your data is not normal, so you need to go for non-parametric analysis or you have to use some resampling method, right? If your data is normal, so you can confirm to apply parametric test, right? Another thing, uh, addition to missing value and normality is uh, uh, detecting outlier. What's outlier? Outlier is some data that is uh, uh, actually the, with the large distance uh, or far from majority of your data. So if majority of your data are concentrated uh, around some specific values, but you have a few cases, you have a few cases very different with these values. So those cases are considered outlier. So you need to detect and decide the, how you want to deal with these outlier cases. Right? So, uh, uh, especially is uh, uh, very important for uh, sometimes to detecting some human error. For example, when you clean your data, right? When you clean your data, you uh, uh, instead of four, you put 44, or instead of five, you put 55, right? So uh, there are some, uh, the, this type of problem, and also in real situation, Sometimes, for example, you collected data using uh, a questionnaire, nine point Likert scale, and most of your respondent answer between uh, uh, five to nine, but uh, a few cases answer one because of some reason, right? Still, you can consider these uh, cases these cases actually uh, are considered outlier and you need to be aware about these cases. So we have to detect the uh, outlier. Okay, now you uh, use the uh, presentation in presentation mode, right? Yes. Okay. So, okay. For example, for this one, if you have uh, these cases, majority of your cases actually concentrated in this area, but you have few cases that are uh, different and uh, with the large distance with the majority of your cases. So these cases consider outlier, okay? But how we can detect outlier? To detect outlier, we have to uh, calculate uh, uh, actually the 25 percentile uh, 75 percentile and uh, or quarter one, uh, uh, quartile two, uh, three, and uh, based on this, we can calculate outlier. But what's the mean of this uh, quarter one, uh, two, and three? 
or 25th uh, percentile, the uh, 75 percentile. Okay, this actually is for number of cases and frequency of cases. Uh, yeah, up to this value. Okay, for example, if we have a few values and the frequency of uh, respondent answer different values, so we have different frequency for, for example, one to five, right? So uh, we have distribution of answers. We have distribution of answers. Q1 or quartile one is the value Quartal one or Q one is the value that twenty five percent of cases, twenty five percent of respondents answer the value, and the answer is uh, uh, actually uh, uh, lower than this value lower than this value, right? So here, quartile one or 25 percentile is the value that 25% of all respondents follow in this area. This is the value. For example, the value is uh, three. So means 25% of all respondent answer one, two, three, answer. Quarter, uh, quartile two or 50% percent percentile is median, right? Is median. So median and or 25 or 50 percentile or uh, quartile two is the value that 50 percent of respondent fall in this area, fall in this area. So quarter, quartile three or 75 percentile is 75% of our respondent. 75% of our respondent. Right? So we can calculate 90, uh, 19th percentile means 90% of our respondent. For example, if here is 19 percentile. It means 90% of all respondents fall under this area, right? So we can, we can calculate this quartile one or 25 percentile, 25 percent of all respondent, the value for 25% of all respondent, the value for 50% median, and the value for 75% uh, of all uh, respondent, right? So we can calculate this quartal one, two, and three. Based on these values, we can calculate outlier. We can detect outlier. Okay, so the difference between Q1, quartile one, the value of quartile one, and the value of quartile three is interquartile range. IQR, interquartile range. So the difference between Q1 value and Q3 value. Okay, so we can calculate this one any values, any values 
higher than 1.5 1.5 inter quartile range plus the value of Q3 the value of Q3 so any value if we have in our uh, data set any value higher than 1.5 of interquartile range plus Q3 this this is 1.5 interquartile this any value higher than this 1.5 interquartile plus Q3, these two will be considered outlier. Or any value lower than, any value lower than, Q1, any value lower than Q1 minus 1.5 interquartile range is outlier, lower than. So we need to calculate we need to calculate this 1.5 interquartile range and plus Q3 and also uh, Q1 minus this uh, value to detect outlier, to detect outlier. But uh, actually software calculate these values and based on this box plot based on this box plot by calculating the q1 q3 and this interquartile range show us the uh, outliers show us the cases that are higher than this value or lower than this value so this is the concept of outlier so when we have some cases out of this range, out of this range, this upper level and lower level, so these cases are considered outlier. We actually use exactly same approach in SPSS to detect outlier. Okay, so this is the concept of outlier. Any question? In SPSS, I will show you. Okay. When we go to SPSS, to uh, use this box plot, actually to create this box plot, to detect outlier, we have to go to descriptive and explore. Again, analyze descriptive and explore. So when you click on explore, we, wa we want to check outlier for these two variables statistic when you click on statistic here you have outlier option so you can click on outlier continue plot we don't want uh, normality option is again for uh, missing value we don't want this one and click on okay 
So you have this table and you have this box plot. Okay. You have these box plots for community attachment and for environmental attitude. You have you have uh, the one, two, four, five, six, seven cases for community attachment. Seven, six, six outliers for community attachment. Case number 3341, uh, case number 308, 133, 149, 304, and the 349. So these cases are lower than, lower than, because this one is Q1, right? This one is Q1. So it's lower than Q1 minus 1.5 interquartile range. So this level is Q1 minus 1.5 interquartile range. So it's low, these cases, the value of these cases are lower than this one, right? So here you can see this value is, uh, for example, 2.7, right? So these cases, the value of these cases are lower than 2.7. Here is three and this one is two, right? So we have six outlier for community attachment. And for, for environmental attitude, you have one, two, three, four, five outlier. You can see some of the outlier are common between these two, right? For example, uh, three, four, nine. Three four nine. Here also you have three four nine. One four nine. Here also you have one four nine. Three zero eight. Here you have also three zero eight. Right. So you have some common cases, common outlier for these two variables. Later uh, we can use this one to see how we can deal with outlier. Okay, so this is the way that we can detect outlier for our variable. Okay, again, you can right click, copy, and uh, only paste in your Word file for your report. Right? Okay. So, to deal with outlier, to solve outlier problem, what we can do? The easiest way is to delete all outliers. Okay. Sometimes you realize that these outliers actually are not uh, important or but don't make sense uh, the value of these outliers. So you can delete it. But actually the deleting outlier is not the best choice. It's not best choice. Another one is the second approach for outlier is to check your result by deleting and by retaining outliers. If there is not any significant difference between these two data set with and without outlier so you can go ahead with your analysis doesn't matter you delete it or you retain it because the results are not different but if you get different result you can report both result if if retaining if keeping outlier is meaningful in your study because actually in some cases Outlier also are very important. 
because outliers show some specific cases. You can justify why these cases are different with other cases. Why these cases are, can say something different with other cases. So it depends on your context and your study and your data collection. The third method is to replace outlier with minimum or maximum values of your data. For example, here, for, for this one, right? So this value is, uh, you can calculate exactly what is this value. For example, is 2.7. You can replace these five, these six, these six values, these six outliers, outliers by this minimum value. Or if you have something higher than upper level, you can replace by upper value, right? So this is another way to deal with outlier. But for this case, if you look at the community attachment, you can see some common case with the environmental attitude, okay? Keeping this case help you to interpret. For example, 3083491491 and 341. These four cases are same in environmental attitude and community attachment. When you look at your data set, you can sometimes you realize that these four cases are not important cases because of some problem, because of some specific area, because of some reason, you got this similar answer and outlier for all variables. So you decide to delete it. But sometimes you can detect, for example, you collected these four cases aligned with a few more cases in one specific spot, one specific place. So you can analyze and you can actually the interpret maybe, maybe in this specific area, in this specific spot, there are some specific characteristic, specific reason that people answer community attachment or environmental attitude very low. So what's the reason? So deleting outlier is not good choice. Detecting outlier can help you for better interpretation. But you can actually choose uh, different options. Delete it, replace it, and uh, do analysis using with and without outlier and compare the all right, so this is for dealing with outlier.